Hello guys and welcome back to Clockwork Dandy Needles, the channel where we continue to break down this season's anime. Make sure you are subscribed because I have started to peek across, look at the next season, what is coming our way. It does seem like we're in for a isekai summer, not my favourite genre, but I have picked four anime. I believe I have four anime that there's one in particular I have chosen on purpose but with you guys in mind. So we have a detective story coming our way next season. So make sure you are subscribed so you get more information when the wrap up goes up so I can explain that anime to you. There is a Discord for you guys to stay in a loop, get notified on your phone whenever videos go up. This video is slightly delayed. Why? Because I needed to rewrite the script a couple of times because I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm going to be as honest as I can. I did not like this episode. And we're going to go for it. We're going to talk about the bits and pieces. So hopefully you guys understand. And don't immediately jump to smacking the down vote because I didn't like something. I'm going to explain it. I'm going to go through the bits and pieces. There are some good bits. There's some okay bits. But I want to explain to you guys. So let's start from this top anyway. Because we start in a very good place. We start with the anime treating me to a very nice Lewis shot. Where we're going to start getting some basis for our new character. The character Mr. Whiteley. Where we're introduced to the idea of this MP. An MP in British terms is simply a member of Parliament. I will discuss the way Parliament is set up briefly. But I'm not going to try and confuse anyone. I will just give you the basics. This is episode 8. This is the White Knight Act 1. We are going to be focusing in on two new characters this week. One was already, one we already know was Milton. We'll talk about Milton a little bit later on. Let's talk about Mr. Whiteley. And I figured that Mr. Whiteley, of course, is our White Knight. Mr. Whiteley is an MP within the House of Commons. So the way the British Parliament is set up, we're going to do this as simple as we can because it can get very confusing. There are two different houses. The first house is the House of Commons. There are more members in the House of Commons than there are in the House of Lords. The House of Lords, of course, being the higher up house that we're talking about. There, generally, every area has an MP that they will vote in and then that MP gets a chance to sit within the House of Commons and they get to vote on things. So to get a bill passed, obviously, Mr. Whiteley is trying to push for the vote for the lower classes. Of course, please bear in mind, this is not the vote for women. That did not come until a lot, lot later on. He's trying to get this bill passed, so what he needs to do is get a majority vote in the House of Commons. This then pushes his bill up to the House of Lords, and then the House of Lords will then come to an agreement. If this bill then gets the majority in that house, the Queen then signs it and then that is passed down. Just to clarify that we do have a Queen. She doesn't really have any political powers whatsoever. However, she does need to sign the bills that go to her that have been finalised. She, she just signs things. She doesn't really have the power to say no but she signs anything that has cleared both houses. So that is how a law is passed within the UK. We are seeing Mr. Whiteley met with an opposition, mainly from the upper houses, which isn't going to bode well for him if he's trying to get this bill passed. But he's mainly getting opposition from the upper class who do not simply want the lower class to be involved in voting. A lot of the common consensus was that the lower classes didn't have the information to make a vote or they weren't smart enough to have the vote. Of course, this is very backward thinking and it's just a simply a very old fashioned way of thinking. Of course, women not even considered at this point in time. I mean, William could have been completely revolutionary and for fighting for women's rights, but he's not. That's not where the argument's coming in. The argument's going to come in a bit later on. This is our setup. So we're simply just setting up our, our figure. Mr. Whiteley is going to be quite an important figure, it would seem. Very explosive opposition in the fact that we're actually going to have somebody trying their hardest to kill Whiteley. Now I'm going to start putting things apart and I apologise, guys, I have to. Just because this anime is so smart, this episode doesn't do it justice in a sense. So somebody has tried to use dynamite. They've basically rigged up his carriage. It's just a very, very poorly timed trap. This trap is so flawed. First things first, they have used dynamite. And again, we see Whiteley not getting in because he can smell it. Second of all, you need to light dynamite. Dynamite isn't going to be one of those things where you can set a time or run away. Somebody has to have seen this guy actually lighting the dynamite, even just messing around with under the carriage. So we know that this guy is nearby, of course. Whiteley is clever enough to even spot the guy and pick him out in the crowd. It's just a bit of a flaw. This could have been set up a little bit differently. 
naturally, I think the point here is that this guy and the House of Lords, this guy isn't very smart and obviously they don't have a great deal of things to hand. But again, they could have just simply sniped him. There are different options, but they've chosen an option where it was doomed to fail. It's a, not a very clever trap. Setting dynamite, we see Wortley naturally smelling it. Again, somebody on the streets is going to be like, oh wait, this guy over here was fiddling around under this carriage. I feel like it's a very weak plan in a general. We do see our perpetrator, but we do see that this little event is what gives Whiteley more determination to fight for equality. And I naturally put a little comment here saying this is something that I think Will would even like. Yes, Will is interested in Whiteley and he believes that Will Whiteley might even achieve the goal that he's trying to get without even getting these guys involved. Is it possible that Whiteley could achieve this without even needing Will to get involved? Because he's fighting for equality. He's trying to help make this country better. And him fighting for the lower class is exactly what we want. And this is what Will is fighting for, in a sense. He's trying to disable the way that the power is distributed within the UK. We know that the House of Lords are after Whiteley. They don't want this bill to be passed. They want to keep all the power to themselves. Where Will then states that he's going to test Whiteley. This is probably where the initial problems start to rattle around for me. We get a beautiful cityscape. It's smoggy. It's gorgeous. Just look at the way that the light filters through the smog, giving you a sense of the environment that we're dealing with. Moriarty the Patriot is very amazing when it comes to its backdrops. I love the artwork for Moriarty the Patriot. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have our villain come to the stage. It is time for Milverton to make his entrance. And indeed, he is here. And I've just got to give absolute kudos to the voice actor. Milverton sounds absolutely amazing. He has indeed been hired by the House of Lords to dispose of Whiteley. And we are going to be seeing the power of the press. We're going to see the power of propaganda in a sense, because he's going to be starting a nice smear campaign to try and drag Whiteley down. Will essentially tr wants to trust and leave Whiteley to maybe bring about a good change, whilst we're seeing the House of Lords and Milverton on the other side who want this man dead. So we're setting up our sides, giving it a clear balance so we know what's going on. We then meet Sam, and Sam is my big concern. I do apologise, there is a dog barking outside. This dog does bark continuously. I need to get this recording done, otherwise we really are going to have a bit more of a backlag. Sam is going to die, and it is so predictable at this point. I'm actually quite sad at how predictable this is, because as soon as I saw Sam, him being a disabled character, a character who means a lot to his brother, Mr. Whiteley. And we're also seeing them eating together. So they're definitely a more, like Albert, a bit more of a revolutionary class here. Because obviously they do have money. Whiteley has money, so he's not exactly poor. But he's a nice aristocrat in a sense where they're all eating together. There's no division in this family. So as soon as I saw Sam and the way that he was treating him and the fact that he, he cared for him, he's going to die. We're setting him up to die. But the big question was, what did Will mean when he was going to test Whiteley and whether he could move forward through pain? That's when I started looking at Sam. And I did actually worry that it was actually going to be Will who was going to be wiping out Sam. It does seem that that is going to be falling to Milverton. I think Will and his actions this episode are what really bugged me the most this week. Whiteley is receiving defamation in the forms of the press. This again, this is Milton's area of expertise. We are getting a lot of threatening letters sent to him. And of course, he's had an attempt on his life. So setting up the stakes. North Cross Park, Park, in case you were interested, is actually fake for the anime. There are many beautiful parks in London though, so this could be based on any of them. Where we get into my biggest problem area, because it's just not realistic, I'm afraid. So we end up with a public opening for the park is now opening. Note, this is a public opening for a park. This isn't a political campaign. However, the way that Will has set this up, where we've actually got main opposition to Whiteley there, and the, what this initially turns into, it's simply just not realistic. And it's also very, very risky. You've suddenly got these MPs who have all got their own reputations. These men have got to think about their own reputations. Publicly slam Whiteley in front of everybody. Bearing in mind, this is A, unprofessional and B, it's an unlikely place for them to be slamming him. They've turned a park opening into a bit of a rally, a, a political rally. The setup for this is very, very odd. And that's why I started to wonder if it was set up, which is when I start to question Will's actual motives at this point. 
But I do question the reality of this actually happening. I really do not think this would ever happen. Even if the MPs really did not like Whiteley, they would not go out there in front of everybody to slam him at a very unrelated section. Plus, they have absolutely no evidence. There's no evidence. They're not producing any evidence. It's simply hearsay. It's word against word. And these guys naturally have reputations that they need to protect. So suddenly coming out and slamming them, they're also putting themselves into the limelight. So they, they're also risking things themselves. With the idea of turning the public against him, Will and Whiteley's plans are similar on the same page. They're similar on the same page. So Will actually trying to deal a blow to his public replication at this point doesn't quite make sense. It doesn't actually play in favour of either of them. And bear in mind, guys, look at this screenshot. You're telling me that these MPs who are trying to be believable, trying to act like the good guys here, trying to turn the public against Whiteley, these faces in public. Bear in mind, they're sitting not too far away from the public. If I notice these faces, everybody else in the audience is also going to notice these guys making these really over the dramatic evil faces in public. Why would you even make these faces or even just react like this? in public. The public are going to take one look at these guys making these kind of sneery faces going, oh wait, I don't believe you. Whiteley sadly goes along with the setup. He doesn't, he doesn't try to defend himself. He ends up apologising, which maybe is what Will is trying to test. But at the same time, it really doesn't make sense him trying to give him a negative mark on his own public reputation when this is what's really going to be firing up trying to get what he wants. Whiteley is clearly a good man and he even sends Alb out there to test his what kind of man he is and he even says he's a good man while he is a good man he's fighting for a good thing so will acting against him when we've also got the lords acting against him moved to now against him was taking a bit of an odd route which i don't quite see the logic behind whiteley is a good guy he simply wanted a level park to allow disabled children like his own brother allowing them to enjoy a park not having to worry about drops and staircases allowing these these kids too just a chance to enjoy nature and cha a chance to as well be inclusive he's all about inclusive he's a very good character he is our white knight in that sense but Whiteley doesn't even mention this in public he doesn't make a a play to try and save his reputation which even if he had and that's not what Will wants it doesn't make sense because Whiteley Whiteley's reputation is everything when it comes to a public vote he ends up choosing to tarnish his own reputation and it seemingly seems like it's for absolutely no reason so he doesn't fight back which just doesn't make sense Albert saving my interest at this point comes along and produces the link that Whiteley needs the link that is the mafia to the house of lords which is the ammunition he needs to bring them down it gives Whiteley a bit more ammunition Albert says that he stands with Whiteley he has his support as long as he stays the way that he is so is he worried that Whiteley is going to change his tune. Is he going to suddenly change when he gets more power, perhaps? Albert, of course, we know he's tired of the House of Lords. These guys want to shake up the country. The House of Lords is a place full of aristocrats, full of probably bad people. But that's when we initially find out that Will orchestrated the slam fest. Will was trying to test how he would react, get an idea of whether he's a good person. There is a million different ways he could have gone about it without actually tarnishing the poor guy's reputation, without publicly humiliating him. I do not like the way that Will has gone about it. I'm sure in the manga it is explained differently. But guys, I am judging the anime i'm afraid i am judging the anime I, I haven't read the manga yet and there's going to be other people out there who have not read the manga this entire section the whole slam fest just felt awkward it felt over the top it felt very unrealistic i did not like this section but let's talk about our final sequence another very predictable act sam is now the target of milverton's cronies and milverton's cronies are interesting because we've got a very tall character who looks reminiscent of the Robert Downer Jr. movie where we had the big giant wrestler guy. He's a wrestler in real life and he's hilariously tall. It looks like they're trying to have the same thing going there. Maybe it's an Easter egg to that movie, which I'm going to call them the cleanup crew. They are tying up loose ends. They're getting rid of the people who they don't need. But this again is a bit of a risky move even for Mil Milverton being, I have no issues with. Milverton is a nicely set up evil guy here he's got some nice very questionable motives we can see what he wants he's working with the house of lord 
clearly because it's, again, of interest to him. Working with the Lords puts him in a very good position. It's got money as well. We're going to see Milverton throwing out all the stocks. He is in charge of the press. I think this little tweak, this little change is really, really clever. It makes him a more dangerous foe because the power of the press, especially during this period of time, it is very powerful. So he's got a lot of power to him. Him targeting Sam as well, going for the weak, innocent child, which is definitely going to destroy poor Whiteley, which might lead Whiteley down the route of being a bit more villainous. And even if he did go down a bit more underhanded route to try and get what he wants, as long as he's still fighting for equality, that makes him similar to Will. So if Will suddenly pulls out all interest because he's suddenly killing people, that's a bit pot kettle black because that's what Will is doing himself. He is using underhanded methods to get what he wants, though it is justified. So it's going to be very interesting to see where they're taking this because I'm not overly keen. Milverton, though, makes complete sense. I like him. Will's actions, however, do not make sense to me. The slam fest was awkward. I did not like it. it again, all of this was happening out in public just to attack him and put a dampener on his reputation where we've already got Milverton attacking the guy's reputation in the headlines. It doesn't need Will also taking jabs at the poor guy as well. There are better ways to judge somebody's characteristics and judge how they react in this kind of sense. Unlikely happen. These MPs very unlikely take this public stance to slam somebody with no methods in front of someone. It, I think it's a very risky move. And again, the very openly evil reactions in public in front of everybody, it, it wouldn't happen. Initially, not my favourite episode. I have no issues with Milverton. I like the fact that he's being set up to be a very dislikable character. I like a well-written villain. I don't dislike a guy being evil for the sake of it, but we know what Milverton's after. Milverton is working for people with money. He's a man motivated by money at this point in this episode. We can see what he's doing. We know what his motivations are. He is there to get rid of Whiteley. Whiteley is in the way. He's going to take a very dark route to try and destroy Whiteley. So he might even try killing Sam. And then hoping that Whiteley will just remove himself, quit while he's ahead, you know, maybe even leave Parliament. So he's perhaps taking a bit more of a darker route. And then if it if push comes to shove and Whiteley still does stuff, he's probably going to make a bit more of an open move. So again, a fantastic introduction to our big boy, our villain, Mr. Milverton. Been waiting for him to make his appearance on screen. Love it. Taking a nice little dark twist. Did not like this episode. Will's actions were the ones I just did not like, I'm afraid. Hopefully we can fix it next week. There's been some good moments in this season. I'm not exactly slamming it. Please do reconsider before you smack the down vote because I don't like something that you maybe enjoyed. We all have different opinions. I am not telling you it's a bad anime, guys. I promise. I love Moriarty the Patriot to pieces. I do hope there is going to be a season three at some point because I really do enjoy the world that we have created. I think it's very good. We're just having a few wobbly moments where some parts just aren't as good as others. Because of how smart Will has been shown to be, him suddenly pulling out an action, a, a plan like this, which is not very smart, does it lets the anime down. It kind of lets Will down in a sense. I feel like they could have gone about this in a different way. But none regardless, absolutely cannot wait to see where we continue, where we're going next week. Watch out, Sam. I think your life is on the line. Can we stop that happening? Is Will going to help? Are we going to see Sherlock and Watson appear at some point? That would be interesting. I will see you guys again next week. Have a good day, guys. Make sure you're staying safe. Also, congratulations to Vivi. You pushed Zombieland Saga out of the running. This week's highest video now is is VV Florite's Eyes Song. You guys are the highest commented video, but you have been dropping in views recently. So whether you guys could overtake Vivi, that's up to you guys now. Have a good day, guys. Bye-bye.